Hello, everyone. Welcome to Van Chicago Land Stories, the podcast. I'm your host, Pete Costanas. This is episode 122, season five. And today's date is April 19th, 2022. And uh, I have an interesting show coming up today. Uh, thank you for joining me. I will discuss uh, forgotten coffee brands. These are brands of coffee that uh, no longer are around, but my memories of watching them on TV, listening on the radio, the commercials that is, and the advertisements, and uh, also talk about the Treasury Discount Store. And um, it was very short lived. And also, I'll do a wrap up of last week's post on Van Chicago Land. Right now, uh, the program will go into a commercial break. And this program is brought to you by Pillsbury Frosting Supreme. And uh, the commercial is from 1977, and it's uh, the, the plot of this uh, commercial is you can spread your frosting with a paper knife with this product. It's kind of cute. And uh, so here it is. I'm cutting out this paper knife to make a point about this great frosting. Pillsbury Frosting Supreme. It's so smooth and creamy. You can even spread it with a paper knife. See? Pillsbury makes it a special way. They whip it 30,000 times. You couldn't do that at home. It's never too thin, never too stiff. It always spreads just right. Pillsbury Frosting Supreme. It always spreads just right. Even with a paper knife. Okay, everyone, I am back. I hope you enjoyed the commercial for Pillsbury Frosting Supreme. Uh, I remember this commercial very well. And uh, they advertise a lot about cakes and frosting, especially from Pillsbury and Duncan Hines. And, uh, you know, I have, admit, I have to admit myself, you know, sometimes when your mom, or my mom, that is, <laughs> did the same she would buy a can of frosting and, you know, she would uh, use it to spread any cake she baked. And then, you know, she put the frosting in the, fr in the fridge. Sometimes you, and then you have a craving for something sweet. And then so you would uh, open the fridge, see the can, open it, take a knife or a spoon and you start eating it. <laughs> I used to do that. It was one, when I was a kid, I don't, I don't want to do it anymore, but I, had cravings for that. And then she used to buy chocolate or vanilla, chocolate fudge. Oh, it's so addictive. One time I almost the entire ate a half a can, and then I felt guilty about that. So I'm sure everyone has done it like that. You do it with peanut butter, you know, when you get a craving at night. Okay. In the early in the program, I'm going to talk about forgotten coffee brands and the treasury discount store. And also do a wrap up of last week's uh, post on Van Chicago Land. Uh, I'll talk about my health status for a moment. Uh, I'm still a little fatigued. I'm tired. It's it's my kidney function. So um, I've been lying down all day. You know, and every time I walk or or uh, even stand, I'm out of breath. You know, and uh, so I'm going to, for my ultrasound for my kidneys tomorrow hopefully, and then uh, go from a blood work on the 22nd of April, and then next Wednesday I will see my urologist. He's also a nephrologist, too, so he'll give me the results, and hopefully it's not bad news, because I am frightened. I hope it's not that, and I hope, it, if it's an infection, I hope it's treated. You know, just take some medication, and then uh, boom, gone. But so far, I'm cancer-free. Everything is fine for that, so uh, I'm just on pins and needles. I'm very, uh, very worried, but I have a positive outlook, so I hope everything will be all right. Okay, now we're going to talk about forgotten coffee brands. Uh, I'll mention a few that people have, might remember, or uh, maybe not. So we'll see. What the? Uh, do you remember that in uh, Jewel Food Stores, they had their own coffee brand. And it was called Royal Jewel, or Jewel Royale. I think it's Royal Jewel. That's it. And uh, I remember this. A lot of people remember it, and they either liked it or they don't. But I remember the can. It was like a 
looked like an orange white can with the jewel logo on it like that uh i'm not sure if they make their own brand coffee now because i've never noticed it probably not because you know jewel came out with their own products they still do in a way uh because they uh remember they had blue brook blue brook products they had uh mary dunbar i believe and uh, hill farm remember that uh there was a big scandal because of the salmonella you know outbreak and uh you know my mother shopped there all the time still does it you know at jewel all the time and uh but uh blue brook and hill farm are gone and now they have their own brands it's just jewel and the uh, other coffee brands what the other coffee brand i remember uh is folgers but folgers is still there but i remember in the late 70s uh you know coffee makers were changing they were it was not just percolators or your boil coffee they had automatic drips they came out in the 70s and uh, mr coffee came was released you know the commercials with joe dimaggio and they were very popular and uh, so Cup, coffee companies started manufacturing their own brands using the automatic drip and i remember and i remember maxwell house did adc i remember that and hills brothers and folgers and folgers made flaked coffee not ground and i remember mrs olson did the commercials her act the actress virginia christine you know she was in a lot of movies and she was mrs olson forever and uh let's see and then she you know she, i remember she was hawking this product for folgers for like coffee yeah, pretty good it was very interesting and it was for the automatic trip also there was folgers for the uh percolator and uh so i remember that as well and then decaffeinated coffees came out uh they were very popular uh, i think sanka was the first one I believe I don't know if it's the very first. I think that was another brand. And saying, um, I've tried Sanka a few times, a long time ago. It didn't taste good. You know, it's like that. Uh, I didn't care for it. And uh, so I remember the the I remember on the Andy Griffith show in the '60s, uh, Andy Griffith did commercials for Sanka. And then in the '70s, Robert Young did it from Marcus Welby LMD and Father Knows Best. And the decaffeinated coffees uh, were very popular. And there was one brand uh, that's no longer around, and it's called Brim. Brim decaffeinated coffee. You can find commercials of that on YouTube if you do a search. It's right there. And uh, I think I tried it once. It was years ago. I don't remember. So, uh, But it was very popular, and then, then, then it went away. You didn't make it anymore. I think it stopped in the 80s, you know, just like the. Also, another brand of hot decaffeinated coffee was High Point. And uh, it was from Procter Gamble. And uh, I remember the commercials in the 80s, and it featured Lauren Bacall, the actress, the movie actress uh, who was married to Humphrey Bogart. And uh, I remember those. You could still find them on YouTube, and they was around for about 10 years. It was introduced like 82, 83, and then they stopped making it. So that was that. And uh, also, one other thing, Hills Brothers made international coffees, which was interesting, you know. And uh, I remember the four, maybe four or five, and uh, it was European-style coffees. That's when they market. Now you can buy any flavor you want, you know, French vanilla, cinnamon, or uh, chicory. And... Uh, so there was a uh, Hills Brothers European style coffee. One was Cafe Mocha. There was Almond Mocha. You know, it's chocolate flavor. And uh, so, and then uh, let's see. And there was one I liked a lot when I was, uh, well, I was in high school and I started drinking coffee. It was Bavarian Mint. It had a touch of mint. I like that one. They don't make it anymore. It was good. Very good indeed. And, um, also, there was a uh, called Cafe Capri, and this Hills Brothers flavor was coconut and chocolate. I never tried it. It, was very, it seemed like very interesting. Also, they had uh, Cafe Viennese, and there was cinnamon. Okay. 
So uh, like I said, today they, 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 there's all kinds of flavors and all that. And then also you go to Starbucks. They have flavored coffee as well. Duck and Donuts, of course. And anything you want. And uh, also they, I remember uh, Hills, they had international cop coffees um those little ones i remember the commercials with actress carol lawrence and she had swiss mocha cafe vienna and all that you know little ones like that and uh, i think they, they still saw those i saw those i think i saw that uh yeah pete's market about a couple of weeks ago and they had them on display yeah very interesting indeed okay so uh i still drink coffee to this day uh i like flavored you know to tell you the truth, I like strong. I like it stronger. I like that. No one else does in my family, but uh, I like a good, hearty one. Like uh, at Dunkin' Donuts, they have Midnight. It used to be dark roasted. Oh, that's good for me. I like it bold, very bold like that. And uh, I'll get it for once once in a while like that. Um, I don't like cream in it. Not really. I like it black. I've been drinking black coffee ever since uh, I went to DeVry Institute of Technology. When I stayed up late and you know did some studying, also for my exams, you know that helped. Okay. Next up, we're going to talk about the. Oh, I will talk about last week's uh, post on the Chicago Line. Okay. Uh, let's see. Last week I posted about. It was Easter. This past Sunday was Easter. It wasn't my Easter. My Easter is next Sunday. So this is Holy Week for all my Greek friends and family. You know, uh, and I found a photo of Marshall Fields' department store around Easter time in 1970. Very gorgeous photo. You know, everyone dressed beautifully, very bright colors. Oh, the store was wonderful and very decorative, very elegant. Uh, we don't have that anymore. It's a shame. It's a shame, you know. And then the old days are on Easter time, uh, little children dressed up in their nice suits and their dresses and their bonds. Uh, some do, but not like in the old days. And they carried their Easter baskets. Um, Robert Hall was famous for that, the, the clothing store, which I'll probably talk about that story in, in a future broadcast, a uh, future podcast, that is, excuse me. And uh, let's see. Yeah, that was so, it was nice. Uh, the, the other thing I posted at Easter was Maurice Linnell cookies, and it was an Easter bunny cookie basket. It was a pail, like a plastic pail. You know, they also sell Christmas cookies. They were famous for them. So I found this, and it was from the late 90s. It was pretty. I miss those cookies so much. So does everybody else, you know, with the pinwheels. Oh, wonderful. I wish it would come back. Please come back. Okay. And the next up, next thing I posted was from the Peter Pan restaurant. And a lot of people remember this place because it was, uh, it was a chain, but uh, not like McDonald's, but it's, and uh, according to most people, it was uh, their hamburgers were awesome. They were delicious. I've never went there. Never went. But my mom did. And uh, we lived in South Shore in the 60s. And she knew the owner. Um, maybe the, I, I believe so. The owner uh, that was located on 71st and Jeffrey. That was on the South Shore neighborhood. It was right on the corner by the, which is now Metro, but it was called the Illinois Central. It was the IC train. Across the street was the Jeffrey Theater. And on the corner was the Jeffrey Bank, later turned into the South Shore Bank. And uh, they're all closed now. Uh, I read somewhere they're going to redevelop that area and they're going to tear down the theater. And that's a shame because it's the facade outside is gorgeous. And... Uh, so when I posted about this menu, a lot of people remembered they went to the restaurant. They went before the movie, after the movie. There was the Brim Mar Bowling Center, I think on 71st Street. They went for bowling. And they would always get a hamburger and get a snack or a cherry Coke, some fries. <laughs> so I have the, I put the menu up, and I'm going to read. I'm not going to read everything. So um, I'm just going to have what they had, the ice cream sodas. You know, beverages, banana splits, uh, cheese, and then the burgers. Uh, I'll just read a couple of them. 
Well, a few. They had the Peter Pan Burger and uh, Cheeseburger, Latin Burger, and it was like uh, like hot banana peppers, you know, like that. It was also the Dagwood Burger. <laughs> so it's two beef patties. You put all the toppings on that. That sounds interesting. Also, they had the Riviera Burger and uh, also what two sandwiches there are famous was the Olive Burger. A lot of people loved that. And it was uh, covered with stuffed Spanish olives on a toasted bun. Oh, well, I don't, I'm, not, I don't, I'm not crazy about olives. I really don't like it. And uh, the other sandwich was the Franchisi. And uh, I'll read it off what that is. It's a king size jumbo red hot stuff uh, with melted American cheese wrapped with crispy bacon. Oh, serve open face with a toasted bun with French fries and creamy coleslaw. That sounds good. That sounds good. It sounds like a grilled cheese, but it's a French cheesy. And people remember that. Oh, that's wonderful. They had our sandwiches as well. They had bre they served breakfast and they had fish, and you know they had pies and uh, so that was good. And the, the locations uh, that Peter Pan had, uh, I mentioned Seventy First and Jeffrey Boulevard. That was on the south side. That was the only one that's there. And they were uh, one one was at Adams and Dearborn in the Loop. It was Madison and Cicero. In the west side and oh there was another one in the loop uh, wabash and adams so uh they had two locations i mentioned that one was the other one was at harlem and north by the oak park uh, river forest border oh they also had it, it at oak street you know near the esquire theater you know and over there by near water tower place and two on the north side at Lawrence in uh, Broadway and also Devon in Western. But somebody mentioned there was one on Cermak in Harlem in North Riverside. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, it didn't, it's not listed there. So, you know, but I had no idea about a couple on the North Side. But uh, the Peter Pan one in the South Side, a lot of people used to live in that area, like uh, we did. And, uh, yeah, you know, because our church was near, it was on seventy uh, fourth and Stony Island, St. Constantine, and uh, we know a lot of people. I I didn't have the time to research like who owned the place. Uh, maybe on the next episode, I'll I'll find out. But uh, a lot of people remembered; they loved that restaurant. They really did. Okay. Next up, I will talk about the Treasury Discount Store now. Believe it or not, a lot of people remember this store, and uh, but it was, uh, like I said in the beginning of the program, it was short-lived. It was only in the Chicago Atlanta area for about, I don't know, maybe a few years. And uh, so it opened in Chicago, in the Chicago Atlanta area on March 6, 1974. They had a grand opening there, according to an ad to the Chicago Tribune. Now... They had two locations at the time. One was at Rolling Meadows, Illinois. <clears throat> Excuse me. The address was uh, 1400 West Gulf Road by Route 62. And the other one was at 111th and Cicero in Oak Lawn. And uh, I remember that one in Oak Lawn. I remember, I remember seeing it. And I think it's where, I think there was a Kmart there. And uh, a Zaire, I believe. Um, right now, there's a Mariano's there. I went there about uh, last year, that area. And uh, a couple of years later, it opened in Niles by the Golf Mill Shopping Center. That was at 8500 Golf Road. Okay. And uh, it was, uh, I'll give you a little history of that store. And uh, the store was founded by J.C. Penney. And it was founded in 1962. But it did not open in the Chicago and area at that time. It opened about 10 years later. And uh, first it was called Treasure Island. Not 
the treasury uh, because it's confusing to some other stores. You know, we had a Treasure Island in Chicago that was a grocery store. It was here for a long, long time. I'll t discuss it in a future episode. And uh, it was founded by a man named David Kritzik and his two sons, Robert and Stanley, in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And the first one was opened in Appleton, Wisconsin. And then they opened uh, another one in Atlanta, Georgia. And uh, then they expanded. Then there was a couple in California, but there were a lot of, there were a few in the Milwaukee area. And then what I said previously, they opened in the, in Chicago, those three locations, uh, in Rolling Meadows, Niles, and uh, Oaklawn. And uh, they didn't last very long. I remember the commercials and that they had the Christmas sales. You can find a couple of commercials on YouTube. And uh, what's, what's unique about this store is its architecture of its roof of the stores. It had a zigzag uh, pattern. It was like that inside and outside, and it reflected the store logo. So uh, there are buildings still standing of that, uh, not in Chicago, I don't believe, but there's a couple of them in, in the south, like Atlanta, still have the zigzag uh, pattern of the roof. So you can check it out. And uh, they, they sold some Christmas albums you know, every year. I found one on eBay, and I posted it on Van Chicago Land. And uh, it was a discount store. It was just like Venture, Zare, Community, Shoppers World, you name it. It was just like that. And, you know, it was very competitive. But then they kept losing money. And then there was a recession. And then uh, eventually they were closed. And, uh, but the, the strange part, well, it's not strange. I mean, when you went to shop there at the Treasury, uh, it was part of J.C. Penny. You can use your J.C. Penny credit card to purchase stuff, which is interesting. I wish they had a Treasury credit card. That'd be awesome. You know, be a real thing. No, but you used your J.C. your J.C. Penny credit card. That's kind of cool. Okay, and uh, so that's another store that went bye bye. <laughs> And, but people still remember to this day. They really do. And uh, I don't know the quality of their products. Maybe they were nice. Some were cheap. Who knows? Uh, but I, I think I went, like I said before, I went once, the one in Oakland. Uh I asked my mother about it. She remembers her, remembered the store, that is. Excuse me. And she said yes. She did remember it. You know, thank God. <laughs> You know, that's amazing. Sometimes you have to get, uh, you know, go to the source and you find out. And, uh, but that was fun doing some research on it. So, uh, it's amazing like that. Okay. So that'll be all for today. Uh, today I talked about the forgotten coffee brands. I talked about the, uh, last week's, uh, post on Van Chicago Land on my Facebook page and also the Treasury Discount Store. And uh, thank you for joining me. I enjoyed uh, talking. Uh, I will do a podcast episode this weekend, but it is Easter for me. I don't know because I go to church uh, that weekend at night, but it depends how I feel. I, I don't know. I probably If I don't go, I'll do a podcast. If I do go, I won't do one. So this Sunday is going to be Easter. It's going to be beautiful. I heard the weather's going to be gorgeous. Oh, very nice. Can't wait. And uh, this is Holy Week, so, uh, you know, and it's a very nice time, you know, for me. Okay, so this is Pete Costanas. This is episode 122 of Van Chicago Land Stories, the podcast. And uh, thank you again for joining me. And to everyone who is celebrating Easter this week, Kalia Nastasi, Pascha. And that means uh, happy resurrection and happy Easter. So I will see you soon, and uh, bye-bye for now from me. And here is Ray Rayner saying bye-bye for now for with a little traveling music. So, so long, everybody. Take care. We have to go. Bye-bye-bye. <laughs>